It's the Brick Wall on PATV. Tonight, we've got comedy from David Piccolomini, Craig Friedman, Paul Spratt, and James Camacho. And now here's your sometimes host, Mike Peters. Oh, look at that, look at that. All right, that was amazing. Look at me, this is my name. Well, thank you, Voice From Above, for that wonderful introduction. I am Mike Peters, and don't be fooled, this is still the brick wall. Where's Pete, you ask? Well, he couldn't make it out of the city tonight. And why? Because it's the summer of hell. It's true, did you hear about this, anybody? Uh, the, the transit system is so bad that they've deemed that uh, the summer of hell for the season. Um, so we actually have some footage from Penn Station. Let's take a look. This is actual footage of commuters at Penn Station, everybody. <laughs> That's oh, just. That looks just awful. Godspeed, people. Anyway, <laughs> on to our show. <laughs> At this time, I want to remind our viewers that you can watch our show live every other week here on PTV, PATV, <laughs> or on Facebook. Yes, that's right, Facebook Live, where you get to comment and like or laugh react, along with our various performers. Just like PATV Long Island on Facebook, and remember to hit that live subscribe button so you get notified anytime we go live. Also, follow us on all other forms of social media, at PATV Brick Wall. Maybe one day we'll tweet something. You'll never know unless you follow us, so uh, do that. And if you think you've got talent and you want to be on our show, please send an email to patvbrickwall at gmail.com, and we will make your dreams come true. And now, we're going to make four very special young boys' dreams come true tonight. Uh, later on, later on, we're going to have James Camacho, Paul Spratt, and Craig Friedman all to come up and tell jokes. But before they do, we have yet another male comic to tell jokes. That's right, we're very diverse here at the wow. at PATV Brick Wall. Ladies and gentlemen, David Piccolomini. Hello, everybody. Hello. I don't even know if this works. This is great. Okay, guys. We're into it. Hi, I'm David. Uh, recently, I just uh, ate half a weed edible, bragging. Uh, and as I ate it, uh, it knocked me right out. I was like, mm, this is like chocolate and just immediately asleep. And I woke up and I just watched a bunch of ants around the other half of the weed brownie and they all had a lot of questions about God. <laughs> Does that happen to anyone? Uh, I... Uh, I saw a billboard recently that was just a, it's a picture of a build, a house on fire. And it said, imagine no one showed up. Volunteer for the fire department today. And I think it's a scary billboard. But I think a scarier billboard would just be a picture of me in an ill-fitting fire suit just going, imagine only he showed up. <laughs> Please volunteer, we need this. <laughs> <laughs> he can't fight. There was a, like, I feel, well, it would work, though, because they would just show a picture of me, and they're like, we can't have him protecting our families. Uh, we need to have fire protection. I don't know why I always try and riff the end of that. Okay. <laughs> Guys, live TV. I practice this set a lot. Uh, I went on a date recently. It did not go well. Uh, at the end of the date, she just goes, she's like, I don't know. I just feel like we'd be better as friends. And I'm like, okay, but we met on Tinder, so you liked my face. What did my mouth fuck up? And she was just like, mm, you, just, you just talked about a lot of things I didn't care about. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I've got bad news. We're going to make terrible friends. <laughs> There's no way that's going to work out. For, why, don't, why do you think I talked about board games and comedy to seduce you? Why did you think that was my move? Like, I could just go to any girl in and on and just be like, hey, girl, you like that Settlers of Catan? Like that Carcassonne? You want this ticket to ride? If there were any women here, they would not be threatened by that. Uh, I, well, I've done that in front. I've done that to girlfriends in front of their boyfriends. And they're like, "Yeah, it's cool. I can feel her pussy drag from here." I am not threatened. Uh, 
My dad's a junkie that voted for Trump. Uh, that's uh, who he is uh, as a person. I don't know, in Long Island, that might be a more common uh, experience. Uh, and I, uh, I think it's a short-sighted move. Because if Trump builds a wall around Mexico, where will my dad get his heroin from? Okay, fine. I know what you guys are thinking. Afghanistan, not my father. He is a patriot. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding, guys. My dad didn't vote for Trump. Uh, felons can't vote. That's one of the rules. Uh, <laughs> my dad's bipolar, uh, and he won't take any uh, medicine for it because he's afraid of the side effects, which he explained to me while on heroin. I know. If I do two heroin jokes, it's way sadder. They really have diminishing returns, uh, which is what we called it the second and third time my dad tried heroin. Oh, I don't care. I'm doubling down on this, uh, which is what we called it when my dad almost overdosed on heroin. <laughs> Okay, fine. If I do one more, I'm just beating a dead horse, uh, which is what I call it when my dad shoots heroin into his 60-year-old veins. Uh, actually, me and my dad have a, uh, some stuff in common. Uh, he, uh, my, dad, my dad does heroin. I spend all day playing Skyrim. Either way, we're both wasting our life chasing a dragon. Uh, that, yeah, that's a little tight. Let's loosen it up with a hand job joke. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, when I was uh, I was hooking up with this girl one time, we were making out, and she pulled back from me, and she's like, "Just so you know, I give the world's greatest hand job." <laughs> and I was like, "Just so you know, that's impossible. You're not one of these two hands." <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, she lo she looked at me, she's like, "No, I do. If you don't come from this hand job, I will buy you dinner tonight." And I'm like, "Deal," because there's nothing I love more than getting a, a free dinner while being real smug while not having come. It's gonna be great. <laughs> But we're just sitting there, and she's uh, she's jerking me off. Uh, it's great though. It's like a meat and potatoes hand job. It's nothing to write home about. Uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she pulls out her phone, presses what I can only seem to be speed dial, puts it up to her ear, and while still jerking me off, is like, "Hey, mom, how's it going? Just so you know, I'm coming home this weekend. How's my dog?" And I came immediately. Uh, <laughs> turns out the uh, hand job was something to call home about. <laughs> All right, uh, this is probably uh, my weirdest sex story, and I'm never going to be able to tell it on TV again, so let's do it. Uh, <laughs> one time I had sex with a girl with a tracheotomy, okay? I'm sure we all have questions. I will take them in order. Let's give a press conference real quick. Okay, uh, the thing is, uh, one, I did not try and have sex with the trachol. That is a very small hole. Give my dick the tiniest bit of credit. <laughs> Dave, why will you never get to do this on TV again? Okay, uh, <laughs> but I went there. She invited me right to her house. I did not realize she had a trach. Uh, so we're walking up the stairs. It's just dark. I just hear this whistling noise. I'm like, are you making tea? Is your house haunted? What's happening? She's like, it's this. I'm like, whoa. I, th I looked at those pictures. I thought it was a necklace. I thought she was just real into chokers. Uh, and it turns out uh, tracheotomies are a lot like ghosts. You'll only find them if you're looking for them. Uh, so we go. And, uh, but I'm still going to have, she's a human being with thoughts and feelings who invited me over to her house to have sex with her. And that's really all I need. Uh, that's <laughs> like, that's not going to stop anything. So we're going and uh, we're sitting there, we're smoking weed, we're eating pizza. Oh, fun fact, if you smoke weed with a girl with a tracheotomy, she blows perfect smoke rings every time. <laughs> it's amazing. I still get hard around chimneys. Uh, <laughs> But uh, she then decides to drop this ball. She's like, oh, also, I'm on my period. And I'm like, but how could you keep such a secret? Oh, wait, I got it. I understand how. Uh, and Well, here's the thing is she's got a tracheotomy. I don't even know if she can give blowjobs. Turns out she can, and they're the best. Fact one, she never had to come up for air once. <laughs> don't groan at that. That is a superpower. That's amazing. Back two, that little uh, tracheal blew air directly on my balls the entire time. <laughs> the rest of my body is sitting on an old leather couch. My balls are in the Bahamas. And I'm just sitting there, and then, oh, but I can't come. I can't, I want to, I can't, because I'm afraid I'll shoot, and then, like, it'll get caught, she'll swallow, and it'll just, like, gum up the works. And I don't know how to get mouth to mouth to a tracheotomy. I've never had to do that before. I don't want to, like, go down, start doing it, I suck up my own cum. Why can't I do this on broadcast television? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, or even worse, she just sits there and she dies. Uh, that I'm like, like, the police show up. They're like, what happened here? And I'll be like, well, uh, I came, I came, I conquered. I don't know what you want from me. Uh, but uh, she's there. And at this point, she's like, fuck it, we're going to have sex. So we start having sex in the shower. We're going at it in the shower, just doggy style. We're going. And uh, she's like, uh, 
I want you to get on top of me. And she starts to turn around, and I push her right back down. I'm like, no, I'm not having you waterboard yourself in your own shower. <laughs> Guys, I'm a hero. Uh, <laughs> story. Uh, and then at this point, all bets are off. We just start fucking in the middle of the bathroom floor. And we're going at it. We're going crazy. And we're just going. And then all of a sudden, uh, she looks at me. She's like, ah, I want you to choke me. And I just get the biggest smile on my face and just go, Thank you guys. I'm David Piccolomini. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> I told you at the beginning when you have questions. I knew yeah. that would be the. It was good. Uh, yeah. So, uh, David, you are from Delaware. Yes. That was that was the big takeaway from my set. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to bring up out of all things Skyrim because it is a mic. Can you hear me? You hear me? Oh, you need, you need, oh, you need, no, no, no levels on the mic. Ah. Oh, look at this. We call that. <laughs> oh, we, call, we call that pulling a Peter. Yeah. <laughs> pulling a Peter. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to pretend this is the uh, Is that fine? Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. I wish we had some coffee mugs. Uh, Skyrim, though. Skyrim. Yeah, Skyrim. I, I, I used to play that game a lot until I realized I was spending like five hours enchanting armor. <laughs> over and over yeah. again, and I had to just put the put the game away. I, I I don't play that much Skyrim anymore, but yeah, there's like hundreds of hours logged into Skyrim. Oh yeah, uh, I'm now just playing Stardew Valley, which is Farmville Deluxe, uh, oh, no. and it's even harder to justify to your friends. See, I, I really wish video games would stop telling you how long you've been playing because yeah, exactly. uh, once you get to like the five day mark, it's like, <laughs> yeah. like I spent five whole five days on whole this. days of my life. Um, yeah, it's worse anyway. than heroin sometimes. Yeah, uh, I, that's that's the thing. It's it just as bad for you. I'll spend 16 <laughs> hours playing a game and no one feels bad for me at the end of it. Yeah, and no. I can't check into a rehab. You uh, can't do it, and it's impossible. Um, actually, I think they might have video game rehab. Do they? I have to Google that. I'm gonna have to. They do. Does to someone know that? So, um, in Korea. Uh, okay. Well, okay. I'm not gonna. Go <laughs> <laughs> I'm not famous enough to get sent to Korea for rehab yet. <laughs> uh, so, David. <laughs> David, very funny stuff. Uh, would you please tell uh, our viewers out there where they can see you perform live? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You can catch me at uh, Ambush Comedy. Uh, it's a show in Two Boots in Williamsburg. Uh, two Boots? Two bo the what pizza is shop. Two uh, Boots is yeah. a pizza shop. But they have a back room that they let us do comedy in. Plus, since they're already a successful business and don't need us there, they just like having us, uh, they give away free beers from 8 to 830. What? Yeah. That's amazing. It's pretty Wait, free great. Free beers for you? No, like, well, no, I get free beers all night. I'm a champion. Uh, uh, but uh, they give out draft beer. They give out a free draft beer to anyone in the audience who comes to me. I'm make a mental note about that. I'll it's great. I'm going to have to check that out. It's so much fun. Um, and in case they can't make it all the way out to Williamsburg. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, check out my podcast, Tinder Tales. It's, uh, it's super fun. <sighs> we get, yeah, if you, if you want to hear more <laughs> stories like I the heard, one I just yeah. told. <laughs> Uh, I got, I got a, uh, there's uh, someone coming on my podcast tomorrow that told a sweet story about a prostitute uh, and her stealing his wallet and then him finding her on the internet to get it back. Okay. Wow. Yeah, he was a real wow. detective about it. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty yeah. good. So was the, the trach, the trach girl, was she a Tinder date? That was from Tinder. That oh was a Tinder goodness. date. Uh, wow. I really, she, she. Uh, guys, I don't know if you've noticed, just, like, when it comes to sex, just, like, immediately lose focus of everything else. Yeah. Like, within, like, the first, like, 15 minutes of us talking, we were sexting. Yeah. And then I was like, and she's like, come over tomorrow, and I'm like, deal, I'm in. That's uh, how Tinder works, right? <laughs> hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. I've seen I it. Know. Yeah, if you have abs, it does. Uh, <laughs> that's really, that's what I found. Yeah, uh, I never had any luck on that old thing. But anyway. uh, well, I could teach you some tips. I could make it, uh, you know, just give you some personality on there. Right? Yeah, it, it's the scene. Uh, <laughs> that's the this scene. Is, this is the this wow, is the yeah. smoothest <laughs> interview that's ever happened on Brick oh, Wall. Just, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, he just gave you, it's like it's okay. You can tap out now if you need. It's, it's fine. Good. It's good. Three oh, we minutes. have three minutes. Oh, boy, I can keep talking. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> uh, well, so <laughs> Or I can tales. shut up and watch you Tinder sweat. Uh, um, <laughs> I think that... What's that your Do you remember what your Tinder profile said? Or do you, Are you single right now? No, I haven't had Tinder in a long time. Uh, it probably was just, like, really brutally honest, and I was, like, kind of uh, 
like the nice guy. You're like, Twitter. oh, don't ne- never I, call yourself I, a nice guy. I, never I, do that. I treated my Tinder profile like an OK Cupid profile, and that was the worst thing you could. Oh, possibly so you just do. wrote so much. Yeah, and girls I were like, this guy seems stuff. needy. And then some girl in a bar stole my phone from me uh, once and was like, "What are you doing? You're doing something wrong." And she went to every single girl that I matched with and just wrote. Uh, beer garden, beer garden, beer garden, beer garden, beer garden. I was like, that's so stupid. And then all of a sudden, I was like, bink, bink, bink. They're like, where, when, which beer garden? All right. I was like, are you building the mystery? Me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so less is more when it's uh, yeah. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. You don't. You want to say too much. You want to. You want to leave some aspects of your personality uh, to hide them. Like for instance, yeah. uh, I went through a real depressive phase uh, <laughs> on Tinder, and then I would meet girls, and I, I would just. Because I don't care about it because I'm over it, but um, yeah. I, I never realized how much other people wouldn't be. I would just bring up how my dad's a heroin addict oh on first goodness. dates. Uh, and that, it b- turns out, worked uh, one time. Uh, to, and me and her are very damaged to get, no. Uh, <laughs> that would <laughs> those be. Are the, those are the relationships that last. Although I do say, uh, this is a big thing, that you probably didn't do this because you didn't know, uh, is you want to bring up something like that's weird about you that you're like, no one's going to like that. No one's yeah. really going to like that. Uh, like I bring up board games on mine. And the amount of messages I get on Tinder and Bumble about Settlers of Catan is amazing. It's fantastic. Are you guys taking notes on this? I, yeah. I hope so yeah. at home. Yep. <laughs> right. Uh, well, be sure to catch Yeah, if you David. like ska metal, just bring that up and you'll have a great conversation <laughs> about ska metal. That's awesome. Be sure to catch David at uh, Ambush Comedy. Two boots in Williamsburg. Get some pizza and beer. Yes. Are you kidding me? It's That's a great, awesome. It's a great deal. Uh, check out Tinder Tales podcast. Uh, we got the info up there. TinderTalespod.com. Oh, and I do a li- I'm do. i doing a live, live episode of it at QED in Astoria, which I think is closer to you guys uh, here, uh, July 21st. And we got yeah. a bunch of great guests. It's going to be fantastic That's to amazing. check out. Thank you for coming uh, on. Thank you. Man. All right. Woo! So at this time, I just want to remind everybody that you're watching The Brick Wall if you want to be on. Email us at patvbrickwall at gmail.com. Follow us all over social media. And now, who do we got coming up next? Coming up next, we've got Craig Friedman. So, everybody, welcome. Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, give it up for Mike, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, so, if you are what you eat, uh, ate Paul Rudd. Uh, he was in the Ant Man suit. I saw him, I was just like, <gasps> <laughs> he stayed in there for like three days. I don't know what he's doing in there. Uh, yeah, some guy once told me that I looked like Paul Rudd with an opiate addiction. Um, so I'm like some version of him from a parallel universe where the movie Clueless wasn't as successful. You know, they thought it was a pretty good movie, then they got to the end, they're like, oh, wait a minute, he's trying to sleep with his stepsister? This is awkward. <laughs> this is weird. Uh, it's summertime, hitting the beach. Uh, the beach is the only place where uh, no matter what you think about your body image, it's like everybody is an equal. Like, if you think you have a muffin top or man boobs or stretch marks or anything like that, it doesn't matter because you take your shirt off and ev- everybody's automatically entered into the same beauty contest. Uh, and we're all gorgeous under the sun, right? <laughs> <laughs> all gorgeous. <laughs> uh, <coughs> but my, my biggest uh, semantic thing with the beach is uh, I think suntan lotion is redundant. Because, like, what kind of tan are you going to get other than a tan from the sun? Uh, th- there's no other body, uh, there's no other celestial body out there that's giving off enough radiation to really cook your skin. You know, you're just like, hey, Bill, you're looking pretty blue today. He's like, yeah, full moon last night. <laughs> Six hours naked under that light, looking nice and good. You should just call it what it really is. <laughs> give me some star lotion, huh? SPF Alpha Centauri. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. Uh, so uh, snitches get stitches, right? We all know this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Stitches. Yeah, they get stitches. Sounds to me like snitches get health care. Hey yo, <laughs> who do I gotta drop a dime on to get an MRI up in here? The doctor. <laughs> <laughs> to tell on the doctor. I'm gonna tell on the doctor, and he's gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna bust him out. I don't know. Do whistleblowers get dental? Is that how that works? I think it all originated. Uh, turncoats get tourniquets. Do they get blowjobs? I guess. I don't <laughs> <laughs> They get them. They get them. They give them. I guess it depends on who you're telling on. Blackmail. Blowjob blackmail. Here we go. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> We're live with this. I don't even know. Oh, my God. Uh, 
I was uh, working as a secretary at a blood bank uh, for a while, and I got fired right after my boss told me we need more typos. Anybody ever happen? Oh. Ever happen to you guys? Uh, yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Smarten up, Long Island. Smarten <laughs> up. Well, let's do this. Uh, I bought an alarm <coughs> clock for my apartment because I uh, I like want to be able to tell what time it is in the middle of the night, but I don't want to wake up the full power of the internet to do it. You know, I just find that it's amazing that like the very first clock was a shadow, and uh, we need like 64 gigabytes of RAM to to find out. I don't know. There's too much. <laughs> it's 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 everywhere. Technology's taking over, but not only because it makes our lives more convenient, but uh, technology's like more polite than most humans. You know, I have this microwave has a digital readout on it, and uh, after it, f it finishes cooking, it says "Enjoy your meal." Uh, I can't even get when I go to get a piece of avocado toast for fifteen bucks. Like I can't even get eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, I don't know, but it's uh, it makes me worry though, because now we have robots named after people. People got the Alexa in their house. Anybody listening with an Alexa? Alexa, play polka. <laughs> Alexa, order me some Amazon. Everything. Everything. <laughs> give, give me everything, Alexa. Uh, I'm wondering, though, if we're just going to go the other way and we're going to start naming our people after, like, apps and robots. You know, like, this is my wife, Bumble. <laughs> we met through Tinder. That was her roommate in college. Uh, I lived across the quad with iOS and Android. Those guys never got along. <laughs> Uh, Bumble and I have two kids, uh, twins. We named them after the way they were conceived. This is Netflix and this is Chill. <laughs> <laughs> you want to meet our dog? Hey, come here, Spotify. Here, Spotify. <laughs> it's a good boy. It's a good boy. Uh, yeah, but uh, technology's going to take over. The world's going to end. <laughs> Whatever. You know, it's going to happen. Uh, but I can't get behind people who romanticize the apocalypse because people are like, oh, yeah, we're going to repopulate the earth. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's great, man. You got a fallout bunker with, like, blacklight posters. <laughs> uh, how, how, many, how many pampers you got in that fallout bunker? <laughs> how, how much Gerber? How much Gerber we got? Uh, do you want to? I feel like most people don't think through the equation of repopulating the earth because it's like you could really logistically just be giving birth to the loneliest person on the planet. <laughs> Because you're like, oh, we gave birth to someone to repopulate the earth, and there's nobody else left. So we did it for you, uh, our unborn child <laughs> that <laughs> now has to live through a radioactive wasteland. Uh, but I think that the worst person to be stuck in a fallout bunker with would be a competitive eater. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's like, I got good news and I got bad news. Uh, bad news is we're out of hot dogs. Good news is Joey Chestnut just set a new record. Hey, uh, he's a panic eater. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Same. <coughs> yeah, he's like just to eat, ri eat right there with him. Just do it, do it, do it. Uh, I don't know. What else are we doing over here in Long Island? Smotting up, Long Island. Smotting up. Nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't even know. <laughs> I just learned that phrase like three weeks ago, and I say it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently they say, smarten up. <laughs> Get it together now, Long Island. <coughs> uh, I, uh, I think I would make a terrible rich person, uh, mostly because I feel very uncomfortable in leisure boating uh, situations. Because I don't get it, because you're not transporting goods, and you're not like fishing. So really, all leisure boating is, is like how much you can spend on boat gas. That's that's just really what it is. You're just driving around and being like, oh, Gerald, how was your weekend? Oh, spent $5,000 on boat gas. Well, we spent 10000 We didn't even go out on the lake. We just dumped it into, th into the ocean. So we don't care about anybody. I don't know. I, uh, I was dating this girl for a while. She had this, uh, this problem where uh, every time she'd eat a piece of bread, her voice would change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, doctor said she had a yeast infection. <laughs> it, was <laughs> <laughs> it was bad stuff. Bad stuff. <laughs> gluten free. You gotta go. You gotta go gluten free for that. Uh, but I, I I was looking for this other job. I saw a sign. Uh, I said experienced counter person wanted, and I walked right in and I said, you know what? I'm against people. <laughs> I could probably take this job. Like, what are your qualifications? I was like, uh, I farted in my brother's face once. <laughs> 
Like, yeah, that's pretty good. What else? Like, well, I refuse to help ladies with their strollers up the stairs. Like, oh, that's pretty good. Anything else? I one time pretended to not know the Heimlich maneuver. Oh. It's all right. They survived. You know what? 15 tater tots in your mouth at once. Let's, that's natural selection. <laughs> that's, uh, that's natural selection. I, guess, I think that's all my time, right? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. a, that's eight minutes. Woo! Woo! <laughs> thank you. All right, Craig, thank you. Yeah, oh, let's see. Do I still have my... I do. My cards. My cards. Still my cards. <laughs> All right, so Craig, where are you from? Where uh, I was born in D.C., raised in Atlanta, but I've been in New York for about 13 years. 13 <laughs> years in New York. <laughs> yeah. And what brought you to New York? Was it comedy? Uh, TV production. TV production? Yeah. Nice, nice. We've actually had a lot of people from the South on the show that are doing comedy or music, and they just they come on up to New York and yeah. try to make it happen. Uh, 13 years. So um, when... What's what's going on in with you? <laughs> How you doing? Well, they, you yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I, no, I'm doing good. I'm here in Long Island. Uh, no, I, uh, I play music um, and I, I I produce content and comedy nice. and um, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, are you doing anything this summer? Uh, got any shows coming up? Yeah, performing. I'll be tomorrow at this uh, the interrupt interrupted improv festival. Um, it's taking. It's four days in a row, but I'm doing a stand-up on the 7 p.m. show at the Roebuck Theater in Times Square. Nice. Times Square, that's in New York City. New York City, proper. All right. That Times Square. Yeah. Uh, what is what's the uh, what is the improv to, uh, show? Like it's, it's just like an improv festival. I think a lot of different so styles of A improv. lot of different theaters come in and stuff like uh, that? I think, you know, you submit to it if you're an improv group or like something cool, like that. Cool. So We've done a lot of improv here on the brick wall, oh, which nice. is pretty cool. Yeah. If you want to come back with your troupe at, at yeah. any time. Um, so wha what else oh, are you're going back to Atlanta? Going, going back home. Going back home. Why see, are you going back home? Uh, seeing some family, number one. Uh, nice. But number two, I'm doing a couple shows down there. All um, right. Anywhere in particular? Yeah. On the 19th of July, I'll be the Joystick Arcade Bar doing nice. a free show. Um, on the 20th, I'm going to be at the Relapse Theater. Uh, there's an 8 o'clock storytelling show I'm going to be a part of. Storytelling show? What yeah. is that? Uh, I don't know too much about it, but uh, I think the host is going to like – have me tell a story and kind of jump in on gear it. Gear people into like a storytelling kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That sounds pretty cool. Um, and then I'll be doing, there's like a 930 mic that I'm going to stick around for to do. Cool. cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not? Right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then uh, I'll be doing. Uh, I got a, a check spot at the punchline on a Sunday night. Check spot. Yeah. Now, what is a check spot? Check spot is when you go to a comedy club, there's a two drink minimum. And they don't bring the bill out until the very, very end. And uh, someone has to stand on stage and tell jokes while people try to figure out how to split the check. That is amazing. And that's going to be so me. You're going to be Sunday. talking over people going like, hey, I didn't have Venmo any me wins. this. Yeah, exactly. Venmo. Yeah. Oh, God. So that's a really <laughs> that's, that's I think my set's going to mostly idea. be numbers. It's mostly going to be mathematical. That would be hilarious yeah. if you just got up on stage and you're like 31, 20%, yeah. 55, and just exactly. throw everybody off. Yeah, exactly. Uh, cool. And the punchline, that uh, you said you that was like your first Yeah, Yes, really? I was 18 years old, and I got a job at the door taking tickets and seating people, and that was kind of like my first entry in the comedy. And That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So you're kind of going home. You're going back to the punchline where you started, right? And you got a check spot. Yeah, uh, whatever. It's, it's I'll right. take it. It's I'll okay. take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's is that like a really popular club in Atlanta? Yeah, it's the one one of the bigger ones. Uh, there's another one, the Laughing Skull. I think that's really really cool too. But cool. They is were they, all busy. Is there a big comedy scene down there? I know Atlanta is like huge with like film. Yeah, yeah, it's huge yeah. with film. There's a really big comedy scene down there. Uh, so I hear. I'm gonna go that's, find out for myself. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, now, what other what other shows or anything you got coming up in the summer? Right? Um, this summer I've just produced this pilot called Timeshare. Um, oh, right, right. That I right. did with uh, some guys. It's a, about a time traveling weed dealer. Um, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Check it out. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. Channel One Hundred One New York. Timeshare. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is not what I would have thought from the title. Exactly. But exactly. It's it a sleeper. It's a sleeper <laughs> hit. Yeah. That's awesome. It actually won. Uh, we got first place in May, and then we had to make our second episode. What aired last night. We did not make it to the next round, but 
you can, uh, it only has to be five minutes long. It can only be five minutes long, but okay. we like, shot way too much. So now we're doing like an eight-minute cut that kind of explains more. All right. And we'll try to show <laughs> so it. It's, a, it's a <laughs> more than you did, you know. There's some key plot points it's that we're missing. A, so is it a web series? <laughs> yeah, we're t- hopefully we'll make more. If anything, it'll be like a one, two-episode thing, and you know, then we'll go That's and make cool. some That's cool. I'm going to have to check it out. Uh, yeah. I think we got the info up on the screen there for everybody else at home. Yeah. Uh, well, that's awesome. Thank you for yeah. coming by. Yeah, thanks so much for having uh, me. All right, great job. Right. Thank you. That was, uh, that was Craig Friedman, everybody. Uh, again, here we go. I'm going to remind everybody if they want to be on the show to email patvbrickwall at gmail.com. Also, follow us all over social media at patvbrickwall. We usually post a picture once in a while. We never tweet, but you might as well follow us anyway. Uh, So coming up next, we've got a very funny guy. His name is Paul Spratt, and he's going to come out and tell some jokes for you right now. Here he is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. He's filling in, right? Filling in. Yep. Yeah. I always wanted to do stand-up, but my name looked like it splattered in blood (laughs) on the brick wall. That's fun. Uh, I'm... I'm a big fan. I don't know about you. Uh, I, I don't. I'm mixed on guns. I don't know how you guys feel about guns. Like, I was uh, not sure about it, but now with this new regime, I think I'm like pro guns at this point. Like, yeah. I think, but like, I think the people who are pro guns need like better arguments of why they're pro guns. I think like everybody's like everybody. If everybody had guns, then it would be safer. Because when the bad guy shows up with guns, then the good guys with guns can kill the bad guys. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, but like. All right, yeah, everybody has like this crappy day job that they work at, right? And they always have that stupid guy at your day job that like doesn't know how to use the copier, right? Like stupid Steve, <laughs> like how do I use this again? I'm like, dude, I told you all the time, just hit the green button. It's all you need to do. Like copying isn't that hard, right? Why do you have this? But that's stupid Steve, right? So if his stupid Steve has a gun too, like <laughs> he's your line of defense. That's not how it works out. You can't say everybody. When you say everybody, that means everybody, even stupid Steve. Like that's not. <laughs> The second thing is that everybody always has this conversation at work when you show up where people are like, man, I'm having the worst day ever, and you've got your heads in your hands, and you're like, uh, I think uh, I'm going to shoot myself in the face. I have so much work to do. And they're like, oh, man, well, I left my gun back in my cubicle. Do you want me to go get it? Like, I don't know how this works. <laughs> the third one is uh, that people are always like, I'm good with my gun. I know how to use my gun. I'm safe with my gun. I'm like, all right. You don't need 35 bullets in your gun, right? Because if you were that good with guns, you don't need 35 bullets. You could have like six. We can compromise, right? But then everybody's like, no, I need all my bullets. Like, well, then you should rethink the term good, right? Like, (laughs) if you need 35 bullets to make your, (laughs) like, if you're good, you only need six. That's like a guy who's saying, I'm really good at pulling out, but has like six kids. Like, (laughs) (laughs) like you misfired a couple times. Like, you really need to think. Uh, I went to college, which is cool. Uh, That means I can have opinions and people uh, listen to them sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I went to technical school, I would recommend it. <laughs> like, especially if you're a guy, you wanna meet women, don't go to technical school. I know that's kind of sexist, but I was at technical school younger, and I ran into a girl, and I was like, hey, uh, where are all the girls at? And she's like, yeah, where are all the girls at? <laughs> it's a sweet lesbian joke, guys. Um, I'm an only child, I don't know if anybody else is. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> Like, especially when you tell people, you're like, I'm an only child, and everybody's like, no, that must be awesome, right? Like, you always tell people that have brothers and sisters, like, I'm an only child. They're like, that must be great. I'm like, no, you just wish your brother and sister was dead. That's weird. Like, don't say that, right? <laughs> and the second thing is, they're always like, you must have been spoiled, right? That's always what people say. You must have been spoiled. I'm like, not if your parents broke a shit. You can't get all the nothing, is what I'm saying. <laughs> My dad always rubbed it into. He always came home, and he's like, what'd you do all day? I was like, it was just me. What was I going to do all day, right? He got me a PlayStation with two controllers. That's a dick move, people. (laughs) Who's going to play the other guy, my imaginary friend? He sucks at video games, right? Like, hey, man, it's your turn. All right, I'll go again. (laughs) Sucks. I'm I'm not great with ladies. It's fun, obviously. Like, I'm nerdy and awkward. Like, I wear my hat backwards. That hasn't been cool in, like, 10 years, I think. Uh... (laughs) Like, I get mad at the little things, like stuff you're supposed to just let go. Like, one time a girl told me I was average sized. I was like, how many guys are you sleeping with you're taking an average, right? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> looking directly at the camera person to see if they laugh. Uh, <laughs> 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 I get mad at all the little things. I was on a date with a girl. We were sitting in a booth in a restaurant. I got up, and I go, honey, watch my purse. And I'm thinking to myself, why, right? What if she didn't tell me? 
some guy going to come by and go, hey, I'm going to take this. And I go, go ahead. She didn't tell me to watch it. She comes back, where'd my purse go? But you left me here uninstructed. <laughs> <laughs> I get mad. Girls say crazy stuff. Like, girls, are, they say, like, I can do anything you can do, right? But you guys pick and choose when it's convenient for you guys, right? Like, if it wins an argument, you could do anything we can do. But if it's a dangerous situation, you're a dainty lady, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I was in bed with a girl <laughs> once, <laughs> and I heard a strange noise. And she's like, what was that? And I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, aren't you going to go look? And I'm like, well, you said you could do anything I could do. Why can't we just take turns? <laughs> She's like, where's well, this a giant man waiting to kill me? And I go, fuck it, it was your turn. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you when you get back, hopefully, if everything goes well, right? Because guys, we never prepare for it to be something. We don't put pants on. We go in the kitchen. We make a sandwich. We come back, tell you it was nothing, right? <laughs> well, but what about that one time it is? Like, if I went in the kitchen, there's a guy standing there. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I wish I wore pants. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have the sandwich I just made? I know you're going to be here. Please don't steal all my shit. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big fan of chivalry. I know you should be nice to women. That's what it is. <laughs> you should be nice to ladies. But like, I was with a girl once. She's like, you need to be more chivalrous. And I was like, what do you mean? Be like, nice to you? And she's like, no, like chivalry. And I'm like, isn't that the same thing? And she's like, no, it's different. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And she's like, you figure it out. And I had to Google it, right? <laughs> So I came across this list of chivalry, and I thought it was bullshit. Uh, <laughs> for example, on this list, the very first thing was if you're on a date, uh, it's expected for the man to walk on the outside facing traffic. <laughs> and she raised her hand, yes. Why? Because if a car jumps the curb, it's supposed to hit us, yes. right? Well, I hate to break it to you. If a car jumps the curb, it's hitting both of us. <laughs> like, it's not going to hit me and stop. You're going to be on the news and be like, I'm going to miss him. No, we're both going to die. Like, that's, unless it's a smart car, then it's going to be hilarious. But other than that, we're both dead. I told that joke, and somebody came up to me after the show, and like, Paul, that's not the reason why that happens. You know, like, back in medieval times, there was wagons with buckets of shit <laughs> <laughs> on the wagons, and they would throw the bucket off, and it was supposed to hit us. Uh, I'd rather get hit by a car. Like, that's what, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, the date's over if you get covered in a bucket of shit. Like, that's done. Like, you're not going to call her the next day and be like, I know yesterday didn't go that well, but, like, uh, do you want to go to the movies again? You're like, no, I can't unsee what just happened yesterday. Like, that's in my head forever. <laughs> Second thing was back in the 1950s, when it rained, it was expected for the man to take his coat off and lay it across the puddle that the lady could walk across, which is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life, right? Were coats made of rafts in the 1950s? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, all I'm doing is putting the coat across the puddle, and you're just slamming my coat into the puddle, <laughs> and we're both getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> like it's tough. <laughs> she disagrees. That's hilarious. She's like, you're wrong. <laughs> but like, I, I was just like, I don't understand. Like, you just have to hope that on your way to the movies, like every other dude has already sacrificed his coat to the puddles on the way there. Like, you know, the same girl be like three blocks later. And I'll be like, bitch, I left the coat three blocks back. <laughs> like, what about opening the little door? That's I was uh, okay. <laughs> I was just about to get to that. <laughs> And the third thing was holding doors, which I was like, all right, I could do that. I get it, right? I'm a nice guy. I could hold doors. But I live in New York City. Sometimes I hold doors for ladies, and they go, Paul, I'm an independent woman. I don't need you. And I, okay, and I let the door go, but then it hits them, and I was like, that was your turn. Where were you? <laughs> Ever been the dude stuck holding the door for everybody, and nobody tags you out? You're just holding the door, and your girlfriend's in the long line in the bathroom and never comes back? <laughs> to see you holding the door. She just comes back, what, have you been doing nothing this whole time? I'm like, I just let 3,000 people out of this place and nobody tagged me out. <laughs> I'm Paul Sprite. You guys have a lot of fun. <laughs> right. Chivalry is not <laughs> dead, I guess. It's just like kind of wounded. <laughs> it's wounded. It's, not, it's, it's wounded. Injured. It's not it's injured. as true as it used to it's, be. Yeah. Uh, well, like we I used don't know. to fight for women's honor back in the day. Like, you don't do that anymore. You have to go to jail if you do that. No, now you just, like, just tinder the next. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, well, I lost that one. I better yeah, move on. <laughs> plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah. Uh, so, Paul, where are you from? I'm from Boston originally. Boston. Yeah. All Same right. Car. Huh? Same car. Car. Uh, I lost it, though. I lived in Pennsylvania for long enough to lose the uh, brutal Boston lost accent. Lost the accent. All right. Yeah. I think sometimes I slip into a Boston accent for no reason. It's just fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, how long have you been in New York? 
I've been here for four years. Did you come yeah. here for comedy? Or I came here for comedy. Yeah, to pursue comedy. the dream. Yeah. And look how pale I am on TV. That's how it looks. That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, how. That's what the camera no like sunlight removes looks like. Ten pigmentation. Look at like my chin. Uh. <laughs> like, that's how I look on TV. That's embarrassing. Yeah, that no, sucks. No, like I that. love how they just have that, so you can just look awful. <laughs> you can just do your jokes and be like, "Wow, you should work out more. Maybe go or outside, you get, do see, something." Like people that just get lost in it and then they just they forget what they're is talking about. Is there a comedian on this show, or just like yeah. a weird ghost wearing yeah. a gray shirt? Um, anyway, so uh, you've been doing stand up in New York City for how long? You said four? eight. I've been doing stand up for four years in New York, but I've been doing it for eight total. Oh, nice. And what's the comedy scene in Boston like? The comedy scene in Boston's great. I wish I started there. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I started there. I moved out of Boston to Pennsylvania, and then I started comedy in Pennsylvania, in Scranton. Scranton. The home of the office. Bullshit. I am re-watching The Office uh, well, now. I'm glad you have that kind of free time. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. I was playing. I stopped playing Skyrim, so yeah. now I can watch The Office. Um Yes, yeah, so Scranton, not a big comedy scene. Not there. a big comedy scene in Scranton. I was okay. one of the only, <laughs> like, there's yeah. not a lot of comics in Scranton. So I, I can, I can imagine yeah. that. Um, so uh, you've been doing comedy for eight years total. Uh, anything happening this summer? <laughs> <laughs> you're, just your, yeah, you're just leading me into what I told you to talk about. That's hilarious. Right? Anything you, cool you want to talk cool about? Anything cool that's going uh, on? My, <laughs> my first full-length comedy album is coming out Friday, so check it out. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what is the what is the album uh, called? I wanted so you to say it. Now you took okay, the fun okay, out of it. Okay, guys, everybody. Uh, <laughs> 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 Paul's got an album coming out, a full-length comedy album. It's called Fuck Yeah, Paul's Here. <laughs> so you can check that out. Yes. Exclusively Everywhere. on Jay-Z's streaming <laughs> no, service. it's on no. everything. <laughs> but it will, I think it'll be on Title it's 2, on, which is It's dope. on everything, Jay -Z including Jay-Z's streaming. Jay-Z can send Jay me the two cents that I'm going to make streaming, uh, Well, we'll bleep that part out later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Jay-Z's streaming service, that's hilarious. I, I did hear that he was going to do that and know that it was out already. Yeah. Uh, did he release it with his album? or No, title has been in existence for a while, yeah. but like he okay. exclusively released his album like a week early. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. All right, know. check out title. Maybe, <laughs> I guess, if you need to, if, some, if Spotify is not good enough. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, fuck yeah, Paul's here. Uh, what uh how how did that come about how did you like um do you, is the I, i'm really not that into the comedy <laughs> scene i don't know what it takes to record an album like oh, what goes into that well um, it's money which is fun uh <laughs> you have to pay right. for somebody to record it which yeah. is cool uh get people to come to the show and then you have to have at least an hour or so of material and then whittle it down to whatever you think is gonna make it the album like the closing joke, which is involves "fuck yeah, Paul's here," okay. so that's why I named the album that. That's which is, a really great title. I'm nerdy and awkward is there guy. Any so. is that like I just picture like you walk into a party and that's what everybody shouts. So <laughs> yeah, like, that's yeah. kind of the joke. So <laughs> you're kind of already on all board. Right, but. All right. Uh, so where do you book like a, a show like that? What kind of venue did you do? Smaller club? Or I like recorded it at New York Comedy Club. They were super nice. Uh, shout out. Uh, oh. They let me. They did give a lot of comics an opportunity that uh, a lot of New York doesn't. Yeah. Uh, so it was pretty cool. I was like, I want to do this. They're like, Yeah, we'd love to have you. So they already have the recording. They have Scott Linder, who's a great engineer producer, who awesome did it all for me. So he, yeah. it sounds great. I'm very proud of it. That's really cool. Uh, well, be sure to check out Fuck Yeah Paul's here, everybody. <laughs> um, and anything else you want to add before? Uh, come see me Saturday. Oh, check Saturday. Check out Stand Up New York. The 11.45 p.m. show I'll be hosting, so come by. 11.45 p.m. Paul is hosting <laughs> uh, the comedy show at Stand Up New York. Stand Up New York. I got a question. Uh, we got a question from the audience. Oh, question from the audience. Uh oh, it looks like it's going to be sassy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 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 oh, I am a very nice guy. Okay, Paul Sprott, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. All right, now it's the part of the show again where I mention that if you want to come on and do some comedy, do some music, do some magic, ventriloquism, anything you want to do, you just email patvbrickwall at gmail.com and we will put you on. So if you want to come on and you think you're funny, just come on and we'll, we'll put you here. Magic, I really want to get that happening, so please, magicians, please email me. And follow us on social media, 
at PATV Brick Wall on the Instagram, the Twitter, uh, we're not on Facebook, but you can like PATV Long Island on Facebook. Get notified every time we go live by live subscribing. All right, All right. so we're on to our final comedian. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome James Camacho. <laughs> Thanks for uh, being here. Hi, Long Island. How are you? I'm uh, doing pretty well, having a great summer. I just quit smoking cigarettes. Woo! Come on, people. That's amazing. Yeah, I was smoking for about 10 years. I quit recently. And I got to admit, I already feel a lot better. Like, I went running this morning. It felt great. So I think I'm going to shoplift a lot more, guys. <laughs> I think that's my new addiction, stealing. It's not going to kill me. Also, uh, I can't afford to smoke anymore. I was buying cigarettes in New York City. They're like $15 a pack. Isn't that way too much money? Yeah, in New York City, you can literally tell how rich someone is based off their smoking habit. Yeah. I was talking to this guy the other day. He's like, yeah, man, I smoke three packs a day. I was like, wow, I'm not a gold digger, but what are you doing later? <laughs> <laughs> we should hang out. You're rich. You can buy me stuff. I'm just trying to get generally healthier, though. You know, I've been very unhealthy my whole life. I've been going to the gym, too. Can you tell? All right, it's working. <laughs> I was at the gym today. I saw a guy working out with a headband on. I didn't know people still did that. I thought that was like a 70s thing. But he pulled it off. He was a good-looking guy. He had muscles. I, I can't do that. If I wear a headband while I work out, it just looks like I'm serving sushi to people, guys. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't pull it off at all. I tried it once. The guy's like, do you have any California rolls? I'm like, I have rolls of fat. You want that? <laughs> Jesus. I am, uh, I am half Asian, though. I'm half Chinese and half Puerto Rican. That's why I look like this. And. Uh, Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> my, uh, my, dad, my dad's Puerto Rican and my mom's Chinese. They met in college. That's how they met. And uh, my dad was my mom's professor. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I am the extra credit, guys. <laughs> That's right. I was the after school special, you know what I mean? My mom came for an A, and she got a D, guys. Yes. Yes. And my dad got double D, so it was a pretty good semester for the both of them. Yeah, it's the, people don't always get to uh, the Chinese and Puerto Rican thing. I was talking to a guy the other day, very ignorant. He was like, Chinese and Puerto Rican. So you're Filipino. Huh. I was like, how does that make sense? He goes, well, doesn't Asian plus Spanish equal Filipino? <laughs> I was like, wow, I didn't know it was a math problem. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'd taken biology before. I didn't know it worked like that. How does one race plus another race just equal a whole new race? <laughs> That makes no sense. Does white and black equal Indian? Uh. Does Indian and white equal Mexican? Does Puerto Rican and Venezuelan equal a baseball player? Uh. Jesus. But uh, my mom was very strict, <laughs> very Chinese, very Asian, very stereotypical. She used to yell at me for getting bad grades. I remember I'd come home with my report card growing up. It was always Fs. She'd yell at me. She'd be like, James, how come you can't get straight A's? I'd be like, Mom, you got to remember, I'm only half Chinese. Uh. Yeah, half he wants to study, half he wants a salsa, so <laughs> relax. And she used to get me tutors to try to get me to get better grades. That's, that's ridiculous, because I'm Chinese. Shouldn't I be the one doing the tutoring? Like, what do you think my tutor thought when he saw me for the first time? He's like, a Chinese guy? What is this, a challenge? What the hell is this? And my mom got me a tutor on the weekend. That's the one day I didn't have to go to school. So Monday through Friday, school, tutor Saturday for three hours. That's ridiculous. The tutor would be like, James, what's 2 plus 2? I'm like, 176. He'd be like, no, what is that? I'm like, that's how many minutes I have. I got the fuck out of here, OK? No more math today. My dad's strict, too. My dad's, a, my dad's very hairy. He's got a, everything. He's got a beard. He's got chest hairs. Um, this is, I don't have any hair. This is me after a month of not shaving, guys. This is it. This is, uh, I worked really hard for this. Yes, it really is. <laughs> My dad's the complete opposite. My dad has uh, facial hair, he's got back hair, he's got chest hair. He looks like he's been swimming in black beans his whole life, you know? <laughs> my dad's old school, too. Like, my dad used to come home from work, turn on the TV. I could not talk to him for the whole day. Yeah, it's terrible, because I wanted to ask my dad questions growing up. Like, I remember when I was six, I'd be like, Dad, why is the sky blue? He'd be like, well, that's just the way it is, son. Dad, why is the grass green? Well, that's just the way it is, son. Dad, how come you forgot me at the mall? Well, that's just the way it is, son. <laughs> That's really messed me up as I've grown older, because now when people ask me questions, I say this too. Like, I had a girl over recently. She's like, how come you finish so quickly? I'm like, well, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Son. <laughs> Never saw her again. 
I am single, I'm trying to get out there. Saw a girl recently, She's, she was nice, she called me cute. That's great, right? I was like, thanks grandma, that's nice of you. <laughs> Thank you so much, get your hand off my knee. <laughs> I have been single for a while now, and uh, I'm starting to do a thing that single people do. They make excuses as to why they can't date. Like I say, I have no time for a girlfriend. I got no time, I'm so busy. Which is ridiculous because I'm a comedian. I work six minutes a night. <laughs> I have a lot of time. But I'm even terrible with just approaching girls. That really scares me, that's a big fear of mine. Just going up to a girl at a bar, I don't know how people do it. Every time I think about approaching a girl at a bar, I feel like I'm doing a book report. You know, like I'm nervous, I'm shaking, I'm trembling, I'm going over lines in my head, like, can I buy you a drink? Can I buy you a drink? Can I buy you a drink? You come here often? You come here often? You come here often? What's your Snapchat? What's your Snapchat? What's your Snapchat? Don't call the cops, don't call the cops, don't call the cops. I resort to uh, online dating to try to meet girls. I gotta be honest, I think the internet has ruined dating. Because now when you go on a date with someone, they can literally find out everything about you before the date. They can do their own little background check. I was on a date with a girl recently, and she goes, so, I saw you're a comedian. I was like, yeah, I'm a comedian. She's like, you've been doing it for like three years. I was like, okay, yeah, just about. She's like, August 1st, 2014, that was your first set. I'm like, what are you, the FBI? <laughs> How do you know all this stuff about me? She's like, what, I saw you at Facebook, I went on your Facebook, I saw you at Instagram, I went through your photos, I thought you had Twitter, I went through your tweets. I was like, why'd you do that? She's like, I just wanted to make sure you weren't a creep. <laughs> I was like, I think you're the creep. Why would you research me for a date? Isn't that the whole purpose of a first date, is to get to know someone? You guys have a boyfriend, girlfriends? Remember your first date, how awesome it was? You felt you had this connection, everything was just vibing, right? If I have all these things in common, like you like baseball? I like baseball. You like rock music? I love rock music. You have 18 cats? I gotta go, you know? This is, uh, this is crazy. I gotta, get, uh, I gotta get together though, man. Just for my mom. My mom's starting to think I'm weird that I've been single for so long. My mom was more understanding though when I was a kid. Like I was in high school, I'd come home. She'd be like, James, you have a girlfriend yet? I'm like, no. She'd be like, oh, it's okay. You're just young Brussels sprout. You know, you just, you just go through puberty. You'll get them later. Then when I was in college, she'd be like, James, you have a girlfriend? I'm like, no. I was like, oh, it's okay. You're just young scholar. Yeah, you just want to get an A. Good for you. Now it's like, James, you have a girlfriend? No. Oh, you're just young gay. Oh, <laughs> okay, I see. You come out now. That's crazy, I got so upset. I was like, Dad, you know I'm not gay, right? My dad's like, well, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Son. All right, guys, thank you so much. <laughs> Shame. Hey. Thanks for coming, thank no you problem. for coming. Yeah, the mom's always making excuses. Yeah. Um, so, James, <laughs> just like my mom, she's at home, he's like, she's like, oh, he's a great host. He's fine. He's good. You know, he's good. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. James, yeah, you're, yeah. you're from New Jersey. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we're in Jersey. Edison, New Jersey. Edison, New Jersey, birthplace of? Absolutely nothing. I don't think Thomas anything. Edison? Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm from Edison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he that's invented the, 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 the light bulb the, thing, the right? Blood, the, yeah, the yeah. light bulb. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, a smart guy smart here. Guy he invented that, things? That what a Edison. nerd. Yeah. And he's from Jersey. So. He's not from, is he from Jersey? I don't know. I think, no, you know what I, it is? He lived there in that area. Did he invent the light bulb? He had a laboratory there, but he didn't actually grow up there or invent it there. <laughs> okay, so sorry. it was just one of his, like, uh, you know, his satellite houses. There. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now that I know, mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, looking you up during your set. So you've been doing comedy for three years. Oh wow! This is my yeah. last date here. <laughs> uh, three years. What what got you into comedy? What? Uh, um, I was a big uh, movie nerd growing up. I wrote a lot of screenplays. I was very weird. Not very. It's introverted. I liked. Wrote my own comic books. I wrote my own short stories, and um, eventually I just wanted to have an audience. So when I heard about stand-up comedy, I was like, well, I can write stuff and people can hear it. That's fantastic because I have just thousands of pages of stuff no one's ever heard of. So this is That's like an awesome. outlet. You yeah. already had like a like a repertoire, like a stuff to share with the world. Absolutely, and yeah. What was uh, what was your break into comedy like? Where did you? Um, well, to be honest, the first time I ever did comedy was when I was twelve. I did a, in the seventh grade. I had a really uh, liberal hippie teacher. And she would, once a month, she would do a coffee house on Friday where there would be no class, no books, no studying, no homework. And people would just go for the class. They could just read or write. And people wanted to come before in front of the class. Sweet. Yeah, she, yeah <laughs> she was a lesbian. You know, they, they like that stuff. <laughs> they, have, they have funky ideas. Yeah. Education. So that's the first time I did comedy. I did that in front of my class. And I was so nervous. I wrote everything on my hand. 
I uh, sweated a lot, um, and I actually did really well. But uh, I didn't do it for another, how old am I? Nine years after, and wow. uh, then I did it in college. <laughs> yeah. You did it in college? Where did you go to college? I went to Rutgers. Rutgers? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I, I used to go. I had go the Paste University shirt on. Used so. to go. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. There it is. I should have just read your shirt. You didn't know? Uh, <laughs> you didn't see this whole time? <laughs> I did not. I'm very observant. Uh, I had better tips very than observant that. Person. All right. Yeah. Uh, so Rutgers, I used to go hang out there. Yeah. Uh, at New Brunswick, right? It's a lot of fun. And they have fat sandwiches. Yes. That's, that's the main yes. thing. Uh, what is a fat sandwich? Can you explain it to our uneducated viewers on Facebook? <laughs> a fat sandwich is a sandwich. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it's it. No, no. <laughs> a fat sandwich is like, it's just a sandwich of just shit. That's it's, all it is. It's just like, it's uh, cheese steak, french fries, mozzarella sticks. Oh, um, just every, just, that's that's just the basis of it's every like fat sandwich. shame on a bun. Absolutely, yeah. But um, sometimes it's not even a... No, it's perfect because they sell them on the College Avenue campus at Rutgers where it's all drunk kids. Yeah. So the, everyone's inhibitions just die, are already gone, yeah. you know? So you have no problem selling them. Yeah, everybody just kind of soaks up all the alcohol. Yeah, the what, what, was your, what was your fat sandwich of choice? I forget the name of it. Fat, uh, Fat Daryl. Fat oh, Daryl, yeah. Fat Daryl, the Fat Daryl had. You know, uh, his, you know they named it because a guy named Daryl, probably black, he actually <laughs> ate six sandwiches and they gave him a sandwich. He His name, they named after him. Six? That's how you get the sandwich name, yeah. You have to eat, you have to design the sandwich, eat six of them, and then you no, get no, no. the name you, of you, you order six. <laughs> oh, Daryl's here, look at that. Can we, can we do that? Six. That was very funny. Uh, no, you eat six. You eat six of whatever they have, and if you can do it under an hour, you get a sandwich named after you, and you get to pick the ingredients. Holy crap. Yeah, that so a guy named Daryl did that. Jesus, I gotta start training. And then we talked about the Fat Zack. The Fat Zack, what's yeah. the Fat Zack? The Fat Zack is a fat sandwich from Rutgers University in New Jersey where they have um, cheesesteak, onion rings, french fries, mozzarella sticks, and uh, not, che not cheesesteak actually, just mozzarella, french fries, onion rings, maybe cheesesteak too. But basically there's no sandwich, there's no wheat, there's no bread, it's just a pizza oh. wrapped around it, yeah. I've had it before. It's ridiculous. I have to take another trip to New Jersey and try the fat sack. Unfortunately, they're not around anymore. So. Oh yeah, they they got it, but uh, they're still around, but they're not on. I guess uh, I'm just gonna have to make it. Down. I'm gonna have to make it myself. We'll pizza, go together. Pizza bun. Yeah. All Let's right. go right now. Uh, Forget the show. You're done hosting. Come on. It's a, well, we are out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we are out of time. James, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having um, me. We had a really great show tonight. Uh, I want to thank our guests. Everybody, come on up here. Come on, get, get on up here. Uh, we had a really great show. I want to thank David, Craig, Paul, and James for coming on to the show. Here they are. Uh, thanks for coming to make yeah. us laugh. We had a lot of fun up here. Uh, I hope you guys had fun at home. Uh, remember, everybody, to email patvbrickwall at gmail.com if you want to come on and perform on the show. Uh, we also have social media. Uh, we're gonna post some fun pictures to Instagram at PATV Brickwall. That's our t our Twitter and our Instagram handle. Um, so from everybody at the Brick Wall, I just want to say uh, good night, everybody. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. And, uh, yeah.